And welcome to the Tony Scott Internet Show. What's going on, man? Apologies, apologies. D- didn't get a chance to get a show out, man. Between you know the holiday season and my new job, and just trying to do my same content with uh, Mark Clark and Troy Johnson. Just a day got away from me. I am so sorry, but I'm back on this uh, Wednesday, middle of the week, hump day. Yeah, man. Are you ready for Christmas? I'm ready for this year to be over. Obviously, it hasn't been my best year, you know, having been unemployed for a while and kind of semi-unemployed right now because I'm only working part-time, but I'm grateful for that. But I'm just saying, can't wait for 2015. Don't remember the last time I looked forward to a uh, the ending of a year, but I am this year. But I am grateful for a lot of things, so don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? So yesterday was pour some chocolate on something day. And apparently it was also take a gun to school in St. Louis Day, right? Is that is that the deal? I mean, we had, what, two guns were found at schools in Ladue and Creve Corps. Of course, when kids do that in Ladue and Creve Corps, for those who are not familiar with the St. Louis area, maybe listening from other parts, uh, those are considered to be kind of uh, upscale bedroom communities and So those kids there just made poor decisions. If it happened in North City or North County involving an African-American child, they would be thugs. You know? So, I'm just telling it like it is. I'm I'm not making it up. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you the truth. Tell you the truth, man. I'm going to tell you the truth. Tell the truth, shame devil. And then there's a story here in the St. Louis area. The Bosnian community has been uh, very vocal lately because they feel like, uh, as a community, they're under attack uh, violently, crime-wise. And one woman, a Bosnian woman, claimed to have been attacked in early December by three African-American men. She's been charged with making the whole damn thing up. She's 26 years old. She claimed to have been robbed on Friday, December 5th, by three black men that made remarks about her Bosnian ethnicity. She actually was found laying in the street... By a passing motorist. She said a car was struck with a metal object and she was forced from her vehicle after one of the men went through her purse. Emergency vehicles were called to the scene. All this going on. And then they checked like surveillance video from a neighboring business and it showed that she was driving during the time of the reported attack but no other no other people were seen in the video so they says well we have this video and then she admitted to making the whole thing up she says she made it up because she was suffering from emotional issues during the time of the incident it wasn't that long ago that a Bosnian man was actually beaten to death with a hammer and they charged a 17 year old and uh, two other suspects are in custody awaiting charges as they try to seek the, certify them as adults in the crime but this woman She says she was so traumatized by that and the violence going on in the neighborhood that she made up the whole story about being attacked by black men. It just seems like filing a false police report. There needs to be, and there may be, there need to be different degrees to that, right? Because what she did should be some kind of felony. Because in that neighborhood there could have been three African American men walking down the street three young guys just hanging out minding their own business and they would have been arrested and traumatized and booked and all this stuff because she made it up she can hide behind you know the, the, some mental meltdown she was going through emotional issues but at the end she did more harm than anything. I mean, really? I mean, St. Louis right now racially is is already tense. And she just kind of like made it worse, didn't she? I I just don't get that, man. People, I don't know. People people are just interesting, disappointing, disgusting. What the hell are they thinking? <laughs> I mean, there's so many different words and phrases that you can actually use. I mean, it's pretty sickening when you think about it, but tis what it is. Google released their most searched uh, uh, words, people, whatever, of 2014. And number one 
Well, maybe we should count it backwards the other way and stuff like that. So let's see if we can do that. Let's see. Let's see what we have here. Uh, I think the Ice Bucket Challenge was number five. The World Cup was number four. Something like that. Uh, a Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 was in the top five. The Ice Bucket Challenge was in there. And uh, Robin Williams was actually number one. Robin uh, committed suicide, as you might remember, uh, a few months ago. He was only 63, and uh, Robin had been suffering from all kinds of things for a long time. And uh, he was the the most searched on Google of the year. So there you go. Hey, St. Louis, since we're talking about our wonderful city of St. Louis, the Bevo Mill neighborhood, Ferguson, all that stuff, we're also number one in chlamydia infection. Ah, yes. <laughs> we're, we're number one in chlamydia. And we're number two in the rate of gonorrhea infections. We're not working. We need to work harder. If we want to get number one, we need to work harder with the gonorrhea. Everybody, we need to quit, quit using condoms, right? No, no, no. Stop. St. Louis has been in the top five for like 10 years in these areas, but finally we broke through with number one in chlamydia, holding a strong number two with gonorrhea infections. You know, I talked about this in, a, in another podcast, but I just don't understand how is it that with all this information out there, man, I mean, back when I was a kid, condoms were called rubbers and, and, you know, it was a taboo subject, you know, you could get them like in a nightclub in the bathroom. I haven't been in a nightclub or a nightclub bathroom in so long. I, I couldn't begin to tell you, but, but you could get them there or you can get them at a gas station bathroom. You know, you get them at a drugstore, but it was it was it was taboo. But as the years have moved on, and you know, HIV and AIDS became a thing, and STDs are still there, gonorrhea, syphilis, chlamydia, number one in St. Louis for chlamydia infection nationwide. Wow, <laughs> that's that's. Oh, I'm glad I'm I'm just out the loop. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm I'm out of the loop. Let's see uh, what else is going on. I'm just kind of like moving back and forth from things. Congratulations to Bill Withers. Bill Withers is among the folks who have been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Other inductees this time include Green Day, Joan Jett, and the Blackhearts, TV Ray Vaughn, and Double Trouble. Uh, the Paul Butterfield Blues Band and the Five Royales. To be uh, nominated, you have to... Uh, have been uh, twenty. You have to have been twenty. What was it? Artists become eligible for induction to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twenty five years after the release of their first record. So there you go. Sheik was shot down for the ninth time. How was Sheik? Sheik was one of the biggest bands of the seventies, uh, late seventies and eighties. I mean, they were, you know, when the disco. And maybe they're being biased to the disco. But then Donna Summer did Donna Summer make it? Before she passed, I think, yeah. But uh, Chic, that's a but you know you can make a case for a lot of bands that are not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but Chic should definitely be in there. But congrats, I love Bill Withers. I think Bill Withers is nothing short of awesome. If you've never seen the documentary Still Bill, uh, it's on Netflix. You can rent it on iTunes. It's it's uh, it's great. You should watch that if you're into uh, music. Another great uh, actual documentary that has had nothing to do with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. This one called Twenty. 20 Feet from Stardom, it's all about background singers, Lisa Fisher, and just a bunch of background singers, and it's also a fantastic, you hear me, you heard me, it's a fantastic um, documentary, so so going around, a lot of stuff goes around the internet, this is one of the bad things about the internet, is people will take anything and run with it. People who, you know, and those people should not be allowed on the internet because you do more damage, I think, than anything else. But, you know, the the latest thing to go viral is the Michael Jordan's not my problem reaction to being asked about kids dying to buy his Jordan uh, tennis shoes, sneakers, whatever. Um, He said, I signed up for a check not to save lives. 
<laughs> Michael Jordan told a foot action employee during an in-store sneaker signing the kids dying over his sneakers is not his problem. He's here to sell shoes and get a check because that's all he signed up for. I mean, I'm sad, but it's not just it's just not a problem that I could fix. They want to buy my shoes, not hear me talk. You know how many Asian people have jobs because of my shoes? Might boost the economy. <laughs> okay, just, let's be clear on some. Michael Jordan never said any of that. Never, ever said any of that. And if you have any sense at all, think about that. Why would Michael Jordan say something like that? The day he actually says something like that, it is over. It's over. It's over. Nike will shut down their deal with Michael Jordan. I mean, everything will cease to exist for Michael Jordan. Why would he say that? I mean, think about it for a second. Why would he say he's 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 got so much? He is still so relevant when it comes to sports, basketball, uh, apparel, sports apparel. Those those tennis shoes that sell for a few hundred dollars and stuff. They the kids still buy them. Parents still buy them for their kids. For, for whatever reason, that's a whole other subject. But why would he say something that irresponsible and stupid and insensitive? Why would he do that? There's no reason why he would say something like that. So stop it. Stop posting that. He didn't say that. If you if you post that, you should be ashamed of yourself, man. Do you not think things through? You got to think things through, man. I mean, come on. <laughs> Michael Jordan did not say that he signed up for a check not to save lives in regards to kids dying because uh, for his shoes. Can we stop with that? Would you please stop? One of the biggest lessons that I've learned in this journey of uh, you know being unemployed is not to put all your eggs in one basket and creating multiple streams of income. I've learned that lesson the hard way, and I'm determined never to make that mistake again. And I say that because I was reading this article about Michael Vick. Michael Vick apparently has a side hustle that's paying off big time. He's got like a, a hairbrush business, Wave Masters, pretty popular. Last year, they shipped 3,000 brushes. This year, 500,000 brushes. He owns 40% of the company. And that's great. I think that's great. Bow Wow owns 10% of the company. So good for him, too. But yeah, that's, I think that, you know, the side hustle thing. Side hustle almost sounds gangster, though. And I know, you know, it's just like, you know, taking it too serious, you know, undershirt, wife beater. Sometimes we take it too serious. I hate I hate the word white beater because, you know, I take it literal. You know, people, most people who we've, when they refer refer to white beater as in an undershirt, they don't mean any harm. So I have to always put that in perspective. So you know, but Mike Vick has a side hustle and it's paying off for him. That's good. That's the thing. Like, and people people will always. I mean, I may get a comment on this for saying for, you know for saying good for Michael Vick cuz people saying that you know he's an animal killer and all that. Look, let, let, let's understand something about Michael Vick. Michael Vick you know and I hate it when people say, you know, Michael Vick got like, you know, had to go to prison for killing a dog and so and so, you know, the, he goes to prison for his, you know, selling drugs. Well, what you know what I'm talking about, right? This whole thing and okay, we're talking about two different things, okay? So you can't put that on the same page. But the other thing is about Michael Vick. Michael Vick went through the system. Michael Vick was investigated for cruelty to animals. They had a case against him. What well, he he didn't just kill dog dogs. He tortured them. Okay? He did horrible things to animals. He did. Let's be honest, he did, right? Should he have gone to jail? Yes, he should have gone to jail. Absolutely. Absolutely. He should have gone to jail. And you know what? He went to jail. And you know what? He paid his debt to society. That means when you pay your debt to society, you're supposed to get a do over. You're supposed you paid your debt. That means that you are no longer can no longer have that held against you. You shouldn't have that held. He paid his debt. He went to court. They found him guilty. The judge says, "Here's your penalty." He said, "Fine." And he went to jail. He didn't like it. But he did it. He manned up. He went to jail. He's turned his life around. He works with animal rights groups and things like that. People still won't forgive him. That's on them. They let that eat them alive. That's on them. But he paid his debt to society, and he gets a do-over. I mean, he does. That's how it is. I'm happy for Michael Vick. He paid his debt to society. What happened to redemption? What happened? What happened? If this was Tom Brady, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Yeah, I said that. Exactly. I said that. So there. It's the truth. 
All right, so the uh, president has uh, told his people, his cabinet, that we're uh, actually going to reestablish diplomatic ties with Cuba, which were cut off back in, was, was it 1961? In the coming months, we will reestablish an embassy in Havana and carry out high-level exchanges and visits between our two governments as part of the normalization process, is what the president said today. All right, there's going to be travel, trade, family visits, professional meetings, support for the Cuban people. Licensed U.S. travelers to Cuba will be authorized to import $400 worth of goods from Cuba. More, no more than $100 can be uh, Cuban cigars and alcohol. Okay, so you, the Cuban cigar thing, to bring them over here and sell them, you can only bring over 100 at a time. <laughs> $100 worth of, I don't know what they, what they sell for. I'm not, I'm not a cigar smoker guy, so I have no idea. But uh, for families in the U.S. sending cash back to Cuba, it'll be raised from $500 to $2,000 per quarter. Okay? They're going to expand uh, the Internet in Cuba so folks can actually maybe you, you send your family member a computer in, Ca- in Cuba. Maybe they have one already, and maybe you'll be able to Skype with them and actually see them now. So this is all. I think, I think this is great. It's about time. It's about time. I mean, because... You know, I mean, are they still under the Castro regime? Yes, they are. His brother. Uh, I don't know. Fidel stepped down a few years ago because of his health. And his brother, Raul, is uh, actually running things. I don't know if he's uh, as, you know, keeping his foot on the neck of the Cuban people. I haven't really kept up with it that much. But, you know, for Cuban Americans who keep track of that, if you have a problem with it, I can respect that. I can until you want uh, you don't want a Castro in charge of the government. I can see that, too. I can completely see that. Just because it's Raul and not Fidel doesn't make it any better. I mean, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But I think it's great because the, the uh, Cuban people, Cubanos, have been uh, been uh, behind the eight ball since 1961, if not longer. And I think that's a great thing. What else? Deion Sanders, uh, his his ex-wife got seven days in jail. Pilar. Who, by the way, is a gorgeous woman, but it just seems like she can't get out of her own way. She's a she apparently is very bitter and goes after Dion. It seems like just about every chance she gets, she violated part of the couple's divorce agreement when she didn't get the kids to Dion back to Dion in a timely manner. He's got sole custody of the kids. It was a bitter divorce case. He's suing her for defamation. That trial begins in March. So uh, there you go. I mean. I never had that kind of drama where the police got involved with my oldest daughter and my ex-wife. It was tense for a minute, you know. My mom really put it in perspective saying, you know, telling us both, actually, that we needed to find common ground for the sake of our daughter. And eventually we did. And we had a great relationship uh, when she passed away, when, you know, when she got sick and everything and her and her husband we had a great, we still have a great relationship. I and mean, when I go home to Galveston and he knows that I'm there, he'll call and see how I've been. And I ask him about the, the boys because she had two boys with him and, and that kind of stuff. So it's, it turned out great. I, it's too bad that that can't be the case for couples when they separate, especially when there are children involved. Tasha Smith, remember her drama? He accused her ex or assumed her strange husband accused her of abuse. She accused him of abuse. Uh, they filed for divorce and everything, and now apparently they're in court again, and she has to give him fifty thousand dollars in spousal support up front. She's the breadwinner, so she has to she has to give him fifty grand. <laughs> women don't like that, man. <laughs> women women hate to write. They even hate to that. I Tammy Holland was my radio partner for ten years, and she used to always say, "There's no way she'd ever give a man money." She said if she married somebody and she was successful and he was, ah, and they'd separated, divorced, whatever, and he was required, she was required to pay spouse support, she said she would go to jail <laughs> rather than give a man money. I don't know, man. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, Tammy. I don't know, man. Love you, but God, I don't know about going to jail. I mean, if you can afford it, then why not? You know, just to keep the peace, just to keep it simple. I tell guys this all the time when they pay their child support. I don't want her spending the money on herself. Well, you know what, man? Fight the battles you can fight. With very few exceptions, judges will not allow you to ask for an accounting of the money. In other words, you cannot ask 
for how the money is spent down to the dime. In in most cases, that's not allowed. I I I tried it. I was young and stupid and hot headed and all that kind of stuff, and I demanded that there be an accountant. Judge was like, "Hell no, <laughs> no. <laughs> what else?" <laughs> and so I I had to convince myself that you know what, for the greater good, <laughs> I need to I need to just let that go. And I know, fellas, it eats you alive. Ladies who pay spouse support, it eats you alive. Uh, or child support. It just makes you crazy to, to thinking of the possibility that if I'm sending, you know, four hundred dollars a month, she's spending some of that money on herself. And I told myself, look, if if my ex spent some of the money I paid in child support on herself, and it put her in a better frame of mind, whether she got her nails done or her hair done, it put her in a better frame of mind, feeling good about herself when she's around my daughter, and maybe it sent a message that you need to keep yourself up, stuff like that, to my daughter then you know what? It's worth it. It's worth it. And and besides that, fight the battles you can fight. The ones that you can't fight, you need to embrace you need to embrace things you can't change. And I couldn't change that. So why was I gonna let that eat me alive? That made absolutely no sense at all. So guess who's joining how to get away with murder? Cicely Tyson is gonna join how to get away with murder. Now, they worked together in the movie The Help, Viola Davis and Cicely Tyson. I think this time around, though, she's going to play Annalise Keating's mother. And, well, no, you know what? Let me take that back. That may not be the case at all. She could play Annalise's mother. She could play a client. She could play Wes's grandmother. There's a whole lot of angles, but she is going to be making an appearance. That I do know. To say that she's going to be Annalise's mom, I think might be speaking out of turn. You know, I don't like to do that. So, But Cicely Tyson can, it does nothing but make any show better. Cicely Tyson is like a legend. So there you go. I What else is going on? See, Tyler Perry's not getting a lot of sleep these days because there's no nannies with the new baby being born with his girl. So that's good. That's cool, you know. I gotta be real honest with you. When my when my babies were born, I was I didn't get up in the middle of the night. I had to work in the morning. My wife wasn't working. She got up. Was that wrong? Should I've let her? Should I've gotten up too? I mean, I had to get up at three o'clock in the morning anyway, so I wasn't gonna get up at like one thirty when the baby started crying, and wanted to be fed. I had to get up in an hour and a half. She wasn't going nowhere. <laughs> does that make me a pig? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does, doesn't it? I'm sorry, sorry, babe. I'm sorry. I may I, I've been trying to make it up to you ever since. So. Uh, but you know, I got to see what she wants for Christmas. What do you, what are you getting your guys? What are you getting your honey for Christmas? You can leave me a, you know what? You can go. If you go to Tony Scott and you go where you see the Tony Scott internet show box, click that. It'll take you to the page and you can leave me a comment. You don't have to say who you are. Just leave me a comment. Tell me what you're getting your significant other for Christmas. Just leave me a voicemail. And tell me what you're leaving, what you're, what you're giving your significant other uh, for Christmas, and I'll, you know, I'll play it back. I'll put them on the air and let you hear yourself in the podcast. That sounds like that would be fun, wouldn't it? Let's do that. Can we do that? TonyScottMedia.com, and then go to the Tony Scott Internet Show page, and then on the left side, you see a blue box on the left side of your screen. It says, send Tony a voicemail or something like that. Click that, and you, you can do it right through your computer. And I'll get an email send it saying that I got it, and it'll be all gravy, baby. That's the gift you can give me. Leave me a comment about what you're getting your significant other for Christmas. Do that. Please. Please. All right, I'm going to leave it right here. We covered a lot of ground, and I said we would, and I hope you enjoyed. Oh, 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 oh. Before I go, I did mention this event that I was going to be doing. It's going to be Friday night. It's official. I can now tell you about it. It's going to be Friday night. It's going to be at uh, Knockouts here in uh, the St. Louis area in Ferguson. If you want to come by, you can. And let me tell you, it's it's uh, Toys for Ferguson is what we're calling it. Love for you to come by. It's early. It's from 5 to 9 p.m. I'm not going to keep you out late at night because I get sleepy too. And it's 11208 West Florissant in the Clock Tower Plaza. Uh, so we're going to be there. Julius Williams, a, a local singer uh, who uh, had a big hit in the 90s called Wait. But he's an incredible singer. Uh, bring a toy, you get in. Five dollars without. No toy guns. Let's not bring any toy guns. Give it to Tamir right now. I don't want to see any toy guns. You know, just bring. You know, don't buy a toy gun. That's not too bad. No. No. But knockouts. Friday night. This Friday night. In a couple nights from.
couple days away. And I hope to see you there. 13 Black Cats is putting this on with me. They uh, said they wanted to welcome me back to the radio. And that's kind of cool. Urban League's involved, Regal Sports, Logo Graphics, all that. They're some of the sponsors. So hope to see you early. If you're in the St. Louis area, come by. Let's take some Christmas selfies. And, and let's just welcome me back to the radio, to the world. So I appreciate you so much for listening, downloading, and sharing. I love you all. Thanks again for everything. And I will talk to you tomorrow.